Inspector Dr. Bhandari, thank you so much for uh, inviting. Uh, also, uh, my respects to Dr. Dharmendra Bhandari at the Medical Council out here. It's a it's a great journey uh, to be able to uh, speak. So, as uh, Mahatma Gandhi said, uh, my life is my message. My journey is my message, and thank you so much for giving us a chance to speak up upon this very subject where we will touch more on preventive aspect. The entire purpose of today's talk is to prevent. So we are promoting preventive health today in a, in a situation where we are a little clueless in health when it comes to see the, the real time that you're going through. I bring to you greetings from Kokila Bain Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital where we follow a motto, every life matters. Why me? Everybody follows the same motto. All of you in the society, in the audience, including Dr. Bhandari, we all follow this motto, every life matters as a clinician. So that is a very strong punchline which was started 12 years ago at the Kokila Bain Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital. I am seated in the second floor in my office at this point in time of this very building, looking at improving quality of life of individuals who actually come to us as patients. It is important for us to reach from this very building to the society, to the country, and by this important, wonderful platform created over the last 12 weeks to reach the entire world and to colleagues in society to be make them aware about what we are aiming for. Our aims today and always has been to look at promoting positive health. And as Dr. Bhandari rightly said, unfortunately, so much of uh, shame and worries shrouded in urological health is what we need to open up when we talk about. I also bring you greetings from a proud team, urology at the Kokila Bain Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital. When I do so, I also bring you greetings from the entire fraternity of medical team out here, which is fighting day in and night. We also deal with COVID patients and there are the doctors who are involved in the whole care that for every uh, institute uh, we have reached where we are only because we commenced, we believed in teamwork, we did consolidate and today it feels so proud to be seated here where a journey till now, now has been effective in all ways. That means all of us are motivated. It's all about activation to start with, persisting and intensity. And motivation to all of us is internal and that's why you all are here uh, for a Chai Pe Charcha on a Sunday evening to get motivated on a Monday morning. So this motivation is completely from within yourself. The challenge yourself every day with a new goal and reward yourself is how we are going to move forward. So as we learn from this important platform, which I have been a part of for the last 12 weeks, looking at luminary speaking, we have been reading, listening and observing and we, we have been in motion. Motion creates emotion. We are waiting forward to come out of this and motivate ourselves and keep moving forward. Today, from this very platform, I'm attempting to connect uh, the dots of this subject to the society. And what am I doing? As Dr. Bhandari rightly said, we are attempting to reincarnate ourselves from what we were. We continue to be doctors and continue to be healthcare givers, but to be able to talk to this entire, entire subject is important to understand where we are. And here we are. While there were winds of change, there were also wings of change. We saw this. We saw the changes happening last year and we knew that things could not have been worse. And what we have right now is about important to safeguard health. So as we are at global threat and the world is at crossroads, we're going to safeguard ourselves and we look at health with a real vigor right now. So every patient who comes to this important hospital, to all hospitals and to my colleagues in medical fraternity, which are general practitioners, physicians in the audience today, my colleague urologist, every patient tells a story. The story that a patient tells is a, a story about agony, is about anguish, is about pain, is about discontent and is all about the situation that a patient lives in. It could possibly be a long-standing story or it could be sudden onset emergency like a bleeding in urine or a pain in a flank. Every doctor lives the passion and that's his only purpose. He was born to do that. He was very keen to look at and take this subject to the next possible. So the dedication and inspiration needs to be recognized or rewarded, not at all. It's all about dedication and inspiration which should run 24 by 7. It's the ultimate sacrifice that a doctor does in most unearthly hours and I want to remind everybody in this audience today the COVID warriors are doing their best. We amongst uh, us urologists in Mumbai have lost our urology colleague today morning and we understand that COVID is taking us a tough one. Your faith is what can move mountains and thank you so much uh, for having answered these two questions. So the poll which came up uh, as a result of the requirement to take the subject was a poll that we had created for you, which means whom do you approach if you have a kidney or a urine related issue? Number one was you go off the counter and buy the medicine, which could be a painkiller or something that satisfies you or you know about it. Or you go to a family doctor who is the first doctor in this city and in places where you can reach. But as we heard about all pathies, Dr. 
uh, Mandari really related to it about? Did you go to the Ayurvedic doctor for your urinary and kidney health to start with? Or did you go to a physician or to straight away go to a specialist called a urologist? Now, that was the first aspect of um, the question that we had created for you just to get to an understanding as to whom are we dealing with. The second one was, did you or your relatives postpone kidney or general health in the past and why? So did you think it was a part of aging process and therefore you postponed it? Like my black hairs are turning gradually gray as we gracefully age. And we think it's a part of our life and we poss possibly postpone sometimes things which are not very bothersome. Or you were ashamed and afraid to report, as Sir rightly said, a lot of it is under the undergarments and you were scared about reaching the right doctor. Or you thought it's too minor to discuss at the outset and you possibly could look at uh, coming back some other day and taking it forward. So this, uh, your faith in the doctor, in doctor whom you see and the healthcare system where you belong to can really move mountains. I, I said so. It is because uh, we are dealing with individuals in the year 2020. That means you see for a problem in the chest, you go and see your cardiologist and pulmonologist for something in the head and the brain, you go and see your neurologist. And similarly, for anything which is gynecological, a lady would go and see her gynecologist, a respected partner in pelvis who works with me and there are there's a wonderful team of gynecologists we have in here. So I rightly, at this point in time, would uh, look forward and say that in the city which may, I made my home 12 years ago, family doctors and family physicians are such an important connection. While I work in this building, colleagues in the whole city happen to be family physicians and physicians who actually take charge of the entire city. And my respect today to all of them who are for the IMA and who are from various physician colleagues, because they are the ones with whom you reach at the earliest. And that's great. These were great answers. I understand that postponement of health does not happen by reason of you knowing or unknowing. It just happens because it's a part of the system that we are born and going into. So as changes happen in 2020, it is all about the man, the machine, the medicines and the motivation I talked about. The motivation is internal, but the man is either the patient or the doctor in the front. The machine are those machines which actually are used for your health. What does it mean? The ECG machine, the ultrasound machine, the laparoscopy machine, and what CERT alluded to is a robotic machine. All helps us in taking the journey of treatment forward, which could help us in diagnosis, which could help us in proper therapy. We look at medicines and India has moved forward, being also the vaccine capital of the world, which we hope and pray does come in time. We are looking at all medicines available today in India were only launched a month, a year ago in the United States and in Europe, which means India has moved forward in all aspects. So as regards health, I think we are at that point in time where we are making paces. We are moving very well. So if we combine that very well, we will not postpone health is what I'm sure about. A man, a machine, a medicines will combine well if we are motivated. And therefore, I should reach colleagues in the society as much as all doctors attempt to reach friends and colleagues so that they don't become a patient all the time. They probably could be prevented. In safeguarding health in 2020, everyone has a role. You and I both. So the world is a stage and each of us is a performer, which means we can work together we can work more together than we have not been working because we have sometimes postponed health. We need each other and we complement each other. That means we cannot do without each other. Truly, we are partners. I work inside the building and you live in the society. And my colleagues in the society who work in various practices, which includes group practice and nursing homes and various hospitals, including the healthcare system, which is staggered between government and private. I think the wonderful job is being done because of the jugalbandi that we have with the society in terms of patient and, and doctors. So on health, we really have moved forward. We have moved on, but we have miles to go in 2020. We are actually this type on a very tight rope. I hope I'm very clear on that because what got us here won't get us there. When we look at all these aspects of moving forward, I'm gradually in, gradually sinking into urology and urology health. The health journey of everybody may not be a straight line. It could be punctuated like on the right side. There could be those memories of issues which could be happened have happened. And it could be a disease process, it could be a surgery, it could be hospitalization, it could be for you or for your relatives or your friends. It is important that we identify that these could be stepping stones towards success. We will look forward to preventing these issues not happening again by possibly keeping in touch with a doctor, possibly identifying them, and we'll come to those things as we shatter. So we are looking at quality of life diseases. We are not looking at life-threatening diseases. A urologist or a doctor, these were two kinds of diseases what's your quality of life diseases or the life-threatening diseases like the cancers and the trauma, which are dangerous things where you need an ASAP activity. But let's talk about the quality of life diseases, which is so much in the domain of the society and all of you in this respected audience today, which means there's a very high prevalence of these diseases, which actually are quality of life diseases. Sir did allude to all of them in 
in, in small issues around, which means they all significantly impact your quality of life on a very daily basis. For example, incontinence, just take, for example, the largest answer which, which came up around on the various issues was incontinence or leakage of urine, which you can't control. Imagine how much incontinence can actually bring about a trouble. It is always underreported, underdiagnosed, understudied, undertreated, and so many times unnoticed also. India does not live only in the metro cities of Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, and Kolkata. We have got two tier cities and three tier cities, and we have got suburbs and we have got villages. And out there, the outreach of the healthcare and possibly a colleague urologist may not be so great. I wish in the era that we are right now on social media and the platforms what we are in, we are able to reach each and every home and possibly be able to do wonders with a kind of a strong platform that I have been given to speak to. Which means we are intending to improve the quality of life of individuals on these diseases which are underreported, underdiagnosed, understudied, undertreated, all because of postponement and shame. Not right. And in urology, we are not discussing about rare diseases. What are we discussing? Remember, rare disease day is that day, which is the last day of the February. If you open up the last day of February 2020, uh, which was 29th of February, you'll find that it is celebrated as a rare disease day. These are those rare diseases like mucopolysaccharidosis, etc. But urological diseases are unfortunately common. These are organs which gradually, gracefully age. There are changes which can happen because of metabolism, because of health, and we got to wake up to it. So I'm not talking anything which is way beyond you and me. For a clinician today like me and all the doctors in the audience today and across the country and whom you know, there's a growing demand of the population which is not well. The diseases are getting more complex, not only because the diseases are as such complex, because the presentations are delayed and late. More so in COVID time, sadly, the routine diseases have become so much of an emergency that we in this hospital and across the country face. Diagnosis is always difficult because patients have always gone to multiple therapies and finally it's such a mixture of things which happen around. Unfortunately, when a patient arrives to a clinician, whosoever it could be, even me, there's a need for an early treatment because it's almost always the same emergency. While the healthcare is segregated so much from a government sector on one side to a private sector on other side, from group practices to nursing home to solo practices, individuals in the society choose whom to go to. And we heard that very well. It is important for us to look at that. We're also looking at thinking out of the box for a clinician who needs to land up in complex surgeries which are long lasting. And he was never taught more than medical science to treat and diagnose a disease, but he needs to look into in today's world, balancing the cost. So what does it mean? A doctor today whom you know, or a clinician today in 2020, needs to be an excellent human being. Sir, you rightly pointed out in the opening bars that first of all, you need to identify your doctor. And a doctor is having his own passion to pursue what he has been born with. He also wants to be back home every evening, safe, as much as you are resting home safe and probably making this disease get defeated. So our recent understanding of health has undergone a paradigm shift. They've undergone such kind of churning in the medical science that we have understood so many unknowns have become non-knowns. We know all that and you know it too. So the, the changing of the goalposts that we understand so much is all about evolution. Evolution about the understanding of the disease and evolution about a modern patient. A modern patient understands whom to see faster. I gather 63% of you see for your urology health the urologist directly, which is a hats off and salute to all of you. We're also looking at changing goalposts by the evidence that we have in science. Science is an ever-changing subject. And in science, it's not mathematics. One plus one will be equal to in mathematics plus one plus one may not be equal to two in science or in medicine. Unfortunately, because you may do your best, possibly the medicine may not act or the surgery may still not be able to save the patient. The experience that we have at this point in time across the world, collated or individual, is what helps us as a stepping stone towards a pedestal when we take those important steps to choose whether we'll give a medical therapy or a surgical therapy, whether you will get admitted or be an outpatient department, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And remember, all this is a lot governed by the expectations of the society of each individual in the audience today and everybody who actually looks forward to helping a doctor out by reaching early. And the whole message today is to take it to the front row seat. That means we got to look at your doctors are working hard. They think in a direction for your safety. That means they think under a hypocritical. Code. First, do no harm. That means the medicines that they prescribe, the surgery that they do, and the approach that they take in terms of investigation should not be delayed, should not be something which could cause an adverse reaction to you. So the aim today is what you seek is seeking you. That is, we are seeking you in time. The awareness is towards the restoring and promoting a positive urinary health. We let's identify you in time. Let's evaluate you better. Let's treat the diseases and finally cure them and thus make impossible to possible. 
it can only be done when it's early and timely. And therefore, we should erase this word M. I am possible only because I am able to treat quality of life diseases because the patient understood this webinar so well and reach his or her doctor in her city in time. Therefore, all those who suffer from health and urinary complaints today and now is a wake up call, which means that we're talking about something you may not be knowing too much. The kidneys are those organs which actually filter the waste of your body and produce that in a liquid form, which is called as urine. To me, urine is a solution with a solute and a solvent admix so well together that you can see only clear or a dark colored urine. You really can't see those solutes which have been dissolved so well. So imagine the biggest computer ever made was not made by Apple or Microsoft. It was made by God. It is a kind of a body which has been given to you out of evolution, which matures to a point in time. Therefore, we as urologists see diseases that are actually at the point in time when you are born, to sometimes prenatal before you are born. We pick up those in the ultrasounds during a maternal scan. We go forward and look at the toddler years and the pediatric years, where as age happens, various organs mature. As such, the behavioral therapy comes in, and many of your behaviors taught by parents brings about a urinary control. And then we move forward to adolescence and adulthood, and finally geriatric. And all this time, these organs are undergoing a small and a gradual change. So the kidneys filter and produce urine, and the urine that is produced is actually brought down by, by these tubes called the ureter. I'm annotating it, so Pratik, it's my annotation. So these are the tubes which are called ureters, which drain the urine down, and they actually are on the flank. So your kidneys are not in the front, they are at the back. The urinary bladder is a receptacle or like a bag, which actually stores urine. The bag or the urinary bladder has a mind of its own, like you have a mind of its own. It actually is a slave and you are the master, but there are times the role can be reversed. So it's a receptacle which actually stores urine and decides to empty when the bladder is good full, it gives you the sensation and you need to expel the urine through the urinary conduit called the urethra. So that's how simple these organs are created. They unfortunately undergo complexities in life. Up above the kidney are those glands which we call as adrenal glands and I annotated there. They're called as suprarenal glands and they are a part and parcel of a bandmaster with two different kind of exocrine and endocrine functions. Men have got an, an organ which is called a prostate, which is out here which undergoes a hormonal change like any other hormonal changes in the body. So that's what is a very simplified urinary system of kidneys, ureters, bladders, and ureters. We move forward. So if I look at where you are, when you hold your hand on the hips, you find the kidneys are at the back. And if there's a stone moving down the kidney down there, you may have a pain from the back to the front. The urinary bladder is down there uh, in the pelvis where you store urine, you get sensations. You excuse yourself from such meetings or your office work. Go to the washroom and only when you are closeted your washroom, the brain gives a command and then the bladder behaves and the bladder contracts and the urine comes up. It is so well computerized. Sadly, diseases can overtake this entire computerized system. Let's look at one of the diseases, which is called a stone disease. Have a look at the stone falling down with the kidney at the back on the left side. The stone formed up on the calyces gradually comes down and it does not come without a noise. At night when you go to sleep, the silent stone which had formed since months or years could actually fall down and block in various locations through an arrow pipe and could be a trouble. Very important for us to understand that stone is formed from the urinary solute itself. It is all about a difference between solute and solvent mechanism, which you could always answer questions as you go around. So remember, kidney stones are epidemiological issues, something where our lifestyle has changed dramatically. We, our water has disappeared from our diets and what has come in right now is cafe coffee day and Starbucks and more amount of tea and coffee and caffeinated drinks. Water sadly is being taken only when we have something to as a lunch and a dinner, which is not right. Divide water intake because you need to feed the kidneys the raw material called the water, which actually would keep urine dilute and would not let stone form. The urine therefore would be less acidic and less smelling. And in other words, you will be under a good hydration, comfortable and physical to move well. Because when Indian Hindu women keep vrat, they feel very tired at the end of the day because they are dehydrated. So dehydration is a result of our activity. We saw some stones moving around. But have a look at these. These are stones which are sitting in the kidney silently. And we were talking about silent diseases where it could only be picked up incidentally when we do a sonography or a CT scan. These are CT scan pictures. This man has got two kidneys. God gave two kidneys to almost everybody, but not everybody. We come to that. And there are five stones visible to at this point in time. How will a stone move out? It is not about uh, dissolving them in water. Some stones are soft and can be dissolved and can be powdered by lithotripsy. But many of these stones 
will actually grow and become bigger. So only there are two natural histories of a stone disease. Once you have a stone, the stone could fall down that narrow pipe or the ureter, could cause a colic or a discomfort at night on one side or both sides, uh, or they will grow and become very big. And none of them is in your favor. So remember, the stones will not come out to the nose and mouth and the ears. They will come out to the ureter and through narrow passages which God made only to pass ureter. Which means that if you have a kidney stone, please see a specialist. He's only a urologist. He needs to look into that and understand what is the hardness of the stone, what is the method that he will employ to treat stones. Such patients who form multiple stones need to be looked into. We need to help them out. We need to look at the causes of stone formation and that's something which we can discuss with you. We're moving down and going to the urinary bladder. I said urinary bladder is a storage organ. That means you store urine because the bladder allows you to store urine. It's like a bag. It stores as much as you can put it. While you're seated right now for the next 35, 40 minutes, the bladder is gradually filling up from both the kidneys. And the bladder fills up like a receptacle without increasing the pressure. It has an enormous capacity like an elastic to stretch and it stretches till the point in time it is convenient for you to socially go to a washroom and void. That is what is health about. But there's a possibility sometimes. So these are the mechanisms through which urine comes out. For a woman, this is the picture where there is a urinary bladder and that's the urinary pipe or the urethra. For men, there is a prostate here which we'll come to and that's a prostate which undergoes a change. So the urinary bladder has a job to relax and empty. Relax and empty. That's what it does and therefore we are lucky about it. But there could be something called as urinary incontinence. Incontinence is a word which is involuntary leakage of urine. What is happening on the left side? A normal bladder can get filled up. We could go and pass urine when we reach the washroom. Let's look at when the bladder is not letting it fill up. It's called as an overactive bladder. Something like a shaitan bacha. Just playing again and again. Not listening to anybody else. So the muscle of the bladder contracts before the bladder is full. So before the bladder gets full, the bladder contracts and makes you the sensation which is called as urgency. That urgency is something, a desire which is almost impossible to post. It could be possible that you may have to rush. If you don't rush or the toilet is not open, the toilet is not closed by, you could leak. And this is something which we need to wake up to, which is called as overactive bladder. That means the bladder does not let you wait. You will have to go and pass. What is it called? It's called as an overactive bladder. Sadly, this in the poll comes to be the highest and sadly the most important quality of life disease, which everybody suffers. I and you could have suffered in your lifetime and could possibly. So it's all about urgency, sudden compelling desire to pass urine, urge incontinence where there's a precipitancy and you could leak urine wherever you are standing and there could be increased diurnal frequency. It could be possibly added with nighttime getting up, which is called nocturia and sometimes you dribble urine after that. So these are things which you suffer from and you really can't say and you're not able to speak to your doctor. It's important to speak up. It's important to tell your doctor about this. It is translating otherwise into agony into anxiety and into expectations key, when will I get well? So urinating multiple times in the daytime, sudden urgency and searching for washrooms, involuntary leaching urine at odd times and odd hours, which could be a classroom, a queue, an airport or a bus stand, and waking up more than two times at night to pass urine, which is disturbing your sleep, is all about incontinence where the bladder doesn't pardon. It significantly impacts the quality of life and that's what I had talked about. We are looking at people reporting to the urologist across the country and the world. Uh, I speak on behalf of the Urology Society of India and represent colleagues in Mumbai and in all the cities who actually work hard and wait for you to reach in time. It's important to reach your urologist in time to be treated on this. The goals of treatment for a doctor is what you want to. You want and we need to do it because this is something else. It is all about eliminating your urge incontinence, decreasing your episodes of going to washroom again and again, giving you the medication which gives you long-term benefits and obviously meeting the expectations of each patient who is suffering with this. That means we fall in line completely with what you go through and as doctors we want to treat this quality of life and improve your quality of life. Once that is done, you are in a maintenance phase and you don't need to see the doctors again and again. Compared to another disease, for example, a stone where we go and operate and remove, a cancer where we do a robotic surgery. So each disease has got a different issue altogether. For fever, we give paracetamol, we don't operate anything. But for a cancer, we need to operate in time. So I think we need to understand that we need to transmit this to society that there are medical diseases and surgical diseases, the quality of life diseases, and there are diseases which are bothersome. So out here, this is what it is. And I, because I saw the poll and understood that urgency, frequency, before you come from the star bazaar and open the key, you leak urine and you don't know where to go to, is not right. It is important to see your urologist and see them in time.
let's look at another female aspect which sir did allude to women suffer and public don't get to speak to is in their in their prime of life from 30s 40s to 70s when women are in the prime of life to live in so low self esteem to be having a restricted lifestyle to be living in embarrassment and isolation and having strained relationships is a sad situation for a woman one of the diseases that a woman could go through which is exclusively a women's phenomena is called stress incontinence what does it mean leakage of urine with a minimal amount of stress stress of walking stress of running stress of climbing stairs stress of boarding a best bus or doing an exercise which is impossible for her she cannot do a yoga or bend for a namaz or even laughing it gets difficult for her so in the prime of life when she is going through all this that's a sad story this incapacitates women of all age groups very young and very old and as we know hormone changes childbirth menopause all these are bottom lines which actually bring a trouble to not to say that everybody will be very young or very old but whenever they have it it could be possibly post pregnancy and post births and post menopause if that is what is happening around i think we as medical community could be guilty in not asking a woman do you have any leakage with cough one question can open a pandora's box possibly a urologist or a gynecologist may never have asked a woman when she comes for a different problem and when you examine her on the bed you find she is in diapers that's a sad story and you ask her why are you living on diapers she would say what do i do i wear two or three diapers a day i am bedwetting i am leaking urine when i get up and run i can't laugh urine i can't laugh i am i'm in such a situation which means that something is going so wrong with her whole life and the, the best thing about it is completely treatable it's all about counseling her and her family and telling her this is treatable we need to reach them in time it's important for us to take this subject to the highest possible level all women who are in their 30s 40s and 60s need to be doing this if you leak urine with a minimal amount of stress which is a stress at home not the mental one but the physical one which is about bending and working in this corona times laughing climbing stairs jumping running you need to be treated you need to see your urologist and they will take care of you they will do those evaluations which includes a urophorometry a urodynamics a sonography but finally with a man and machine finally treat you and get you some which means they would give you back laughter the best medicine that you deserve to improve your quality of life as a woman with all women who listen to me today and who go through this agony and who see their own mothers and sisters and friends going through it it's time to actually break the shackles because unless we do that we really miss it out it's important for us to understand that stress incontinence is exclusively a female phenomenon it doesn't happen to men i'll come to that if it happens to men around but it's a situation which can be sorted out it is us who has been guilty of not asking women to be treated around so friends female urinary incontinence of the overactive bladder kind where you are living on diapers not drinking water um, probably you know searching for your own toilets all is a silent menace if you cough and leak urine if you run and leak urine and you leak urine with even a minimal amount of stress on your tummy which is like yoga or bending it's only you who can break the silence and therefore be reaching out from this very important building all the way to the society through such a wonderful platform uh, which dr bandari has created to be able to inform you that take care of your health take health to the front row seat leave everything to the second row seat perhaps so the patient's dilemmas in these aspects are huge for example as as we rightly heard from our colleagues part it's a part of age and it's a part of every night of life that i get up multiple times at night it is not so severe or not so frequent that i need to go to a doctor it is too embarrassing to discuss with a doctor my urinary and sexual issues treatment may not help me it looks like because she was treated and she did not get a help or my cousin was treated 10 years ago and she did, could not get help is it financially worthwhile it's not such a serious disease that i need to get get into money matters and spend all my money on health and i hope and pray it will heal with time i've heard that incontinence or nocturia would heal with time which is not true which is just not true if they had approached the right person they could have actually got it right so a urologist or a clinical clinic that is focused to the very agony of these individuals is what is important it is important to improve the quality of life on these issues around i must also confess that while women are in their most mature years there is a small subset of women who actually would have something called as interstitial cystitis bladder pain syndrome a very difficult name to but classically if you have got pain while the bladder is filling up and your pain is relieved uh, when you empty your bladder you possibly are not having a urinary infection all the time so women who have got pelvic pressure or pain or discomfort in the lower passage which continues to be long standing and for which there has not been a treatment and it has been only treated with painkillers 
we are looking forward to if you have urinary complaints and pain in the pelvis a more common disease in women than in men it again is a treatable disease i must confess here that urinary tract infection is more common in women but interstitial cystitis bladder pain syndrome sadly has not been treated a urologist also has not taken the best of its work on this subject and this is something where pain when the bladder fills up when my bladder fills up i get a sensation women who get up at night with pain to pass urine are unfortunately having this disease called interstitial cystitis bladder pain syndrome and we have taken this subject to very high levels we also must talk about men and then we'll come to more things around but we need to look at one organ in men which women don't have is called a prostate let me note that and find it where it is so that is what the prostate is it means this is the urinary bladder and the urinary bladder has a mind of its own you can store urine for 2 to 4 hours as you grass gracefully age from your 30s 40s to 50s 60s and 70s this organ called the prostate which actually surrounds the urinary passage undergoes a hormonal change like women have undergoing a hormonal change in breast men have got a hormonal change in prostate and it undergoes a change the hormonal change in the prostate can bring about a change in the urinary passage which means that the urinary passage which gradually closes down and that is what you see in the next slide slide number 2 out here that the passage is gradually tightening this does not happen in a day a month week or a year this is a gradual phenomena happening over years to decades which means men say i am completely fine and they are completely fine every day of the life till one fine day there is an emergency prostate has got again uh, its own blood supply it's a bloody gland from a small lemon size it can grow from 10 15 grams to 100 and 200 grams too so it's a hormone related change happening to men as they gradually successfully move towards male menopause or andropause when their hormones are undergoing a sea change where they are undergoing a change in their own composure the body weight the bone mineral density the metabolic activities obesity and everything going around in the time in the head they are getting more irritable because their hormones are going away exactly like a female menopause for a female menopause it's a one day phenomenon she does not have a menstrual period from january onwards and that is menopause for a male menopause it's a gradual word it's a gradual change they go through a very silent change and somebody gradually watching them it could be their partners it could be peers in the society or their colleagues or their bosses find a change happening in them they are going down they're going down in all aspects they don't feel so confident they are also not very capable sexually around and they don't complain about it so they take everything in their stride as much as the urinary complaints so imagine the urinary passage is gradually getting blocked and that blockage can happen where the prostate can grow on both sides prostate can even grow into the bladder it can grow wherever it wants to so imagine the prostate is gradually growing in men what does it mean the flow which was very good because of this compression happening here is gradually going down in men as a result of which the the good flow where a man could pass urine like a map on the wall now can pass only in a trickle it does not empty his urine completely he empties with a lot of difficulty he strains to pass urine and this is a story of many elderly men i don't think many of them will escape in their 80s 90s and 100s but people do get this problem in their 40s 50s 60s and 70s too they think that my father got it so maybe i'll wait till that time so this straining on to avoid not able to avoid well taking time to pass urine passing with a thin stream are not acceptable phenomena it could happen in 40s it could happen in 60s if a young man who is going through problems of these hormone changes where his prostate is not behaving which will not behave thereafter we got to take control of it immediately which means we as urologist ask them to do a test called urophlometry like the ecg tells everything about the heart a urophlometry tells everything about the bladder and the prostate complex it tells the flow pattern through which you are living around it gives us an idea that your flow may not be good we need to take charge immediately we know that you are not emptying your bladder very well so sonography gives some ideas but urophlometry is a test of choice which only a urologist will do for you pick up the right graph at the right time and would reverse you at least would attempt to reverse you improve your flow attempt to shrink the gland by those medicines which are available to act on the prostate so that's about middle age and elderly people but what about those people who are young so these are urethrogram studies where a male organ is having a blockage in the urinary pipe here so what happens to people in the 20s 30s and 40s if they get an injury an accident an inflammation which could either be sexually transmitted or a trauma or a bicycle injury or a road traffic accident they could have a blockage in the urinary passage there's nothing to do with prostate in somebody who is 20 30 40 years old it could be more related to an obstruction to the urinary passage which is picked up best by talking to them across this very table where i sit and consult patients around 
Urethral stricture is a disease of blockage of urethra. It also happens to women. It happens to women because of instrumentation, wrong instrumentation, catheter injuries, and possibly sometimes hormone-related changes as they turn menopausal. So all these could bring about an obstruction to the flow of urine. The urine is not flowing very well. Let's not wait for it. Let's go and see our urologist in time in the city where we live in and possibly get sorted. He will do the investigations starting from non-invasive tests with a urine evaluation, going down all the way to urophrometry, maybe this test called urethrogram, and almost treat to cure you. So from the care to the cure that a doctor gives you, it is important to partner in completely. Uh, I deal with subjects and I got a chance. It almost looks like speaking again on a TED talk. But last year in November, I got a chance to speak on the silent suffering of patients who live in dilemma, discontent, desperation. And it was all about the, the subject that you could probably open up and check. I must also come to those uh, issues which are already in public domain. You are aware of World No Smoking Day. There's one day in the year we celebrate as no smoking day. That means don't smoke your life away. Smoking brings about all those toxicities which leads to at least nine cancers in the body. Isn't it scary? All that you do to work hard all your life could be just smoked out in a hospital by you having a throat or a nasopharyngeal or an oral cancer, by you having a kidney cancer because of smoking, you having a bladder cancer because you are a smoker. So smokers are at higher risk of urinary bladder cancer, kidney cancer, gastric cancers, cancers of the oropharyngeal cavity, as much as tobacco. There's something called as a World Sleep Day. 17th March every day in the World Health Calendar, it is celebrated as a World Sleep Day. What does it mean? It means that you should sleep well at night and nurture life. I know in these corona times, we have converted ourselves to eight hours, eight hours, and eight hours, and sleeping well and nurturing life. But imagine all those elderly people who actually get up multiple times at night. For them, Urine production is more at night. So when you grow from your 50s to 60s to 70s, urine production increases at night. If you are a diabetic, your urine production production increases at night. And as a result of it, your sleep is much lesser. Your production of urine is much higher. Sadly, when everybody is snoring at home, you're getting up multiple times and passing urine at night. So World Sleep Day is all about sleeping well and nurturing life. And this is what was one important aspect we caught hold of when we created a clinic hub. Let's move forward to something called as World Bedwetting Day. Is anybody aware of that the, the last week of May, a day is celebrated as a World Bedwetting Day or World NUSS Day? 26th of May this year, we did talk to the entire country and the world when we spoke on this webinar about what is bedwetting mean to the agony of the parents whose children are between 6 to 20 or 6 to 15 years and still bedwet every day or twice a week. Their whole agony of living with dilemmas is such an important issue. Let's look at one example of that little later. Then comes the World Continence Week. While you have got days to make awareness, there's a full week to make you aware on continence. That means you should be continent and not incontinent. 15 to 22nd June, the entire medical community in the world did not celebrate but did work hard to make the world aware of continence. Control and continence is so important. It actually impairs your quality of life. So if you have a urinary control issue, wait for every year the medical community comes together. That means we work as a team, as a urologist, as a gynecologist, as a family physician, as physicians in the society, in the city and country. We look forward to combining together and reaching you out in the society and making you understand that continence is important. It brings your life completely. And then come to something as much as an awareness month. September happens to be Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. September also happens to be Interstitial Cystitis Bladder Pain Syndrome Awareness Month. These diseases, these are a longer kind of awareness. These are chronic issues. So prostate as it gradually enlarges can take two directions. From 50s to 80s, it could either gradually grow because of hormone changes or it could convert towards a cancerous change. Something which is deep inside the, the, the urinary passage out here so the prostate is deep hidden inside here. And I can only examine through the motion passage, take my finger and palpate and feel the prostate. I actually can feel the conformity of prostate, look at the PSA values, identify it and treat it around. So we look forward to that kind of an understanding where people get to know that these are all in public domains. Awareness is a part of life in medical science. Don't forget, second Thursday of the March of every year, we spend as a World Kidney Day, the organ that actually gives you life. Global awareness campaign to raise awareness of importance of kidneys to our health and to reduce the impact of kidney diseases, which actually is growing bigger and bigger. Very important for us to know that. Don't forget, we also celebrate Women's Day. They're very much up there. 8th March is a focal point in women in the movement of women's rights and women's health. 
we look forward to women's urinary incontinence we look forward to women's living in agony because of stress incontinence female sexual dysfunction a problem which they don't know whom to speak to for which a urologist takes his charge and takes it forward and helps the couple as much as we help the infertile couples around so female sexual dysfunction is something of a subject too much in agony as much as the male sexual dysfunction these are subjects which is a part of the public domain of a urologist urologist is the one who takes this role and takes it forward i'm finally coming to the health topic of world health day 7th april every day is a world health day this time we did celebrate that sadly in the corona times get locked down but that is how we will work we'll improve our health even from our homes by understanding the subject as much as we are understanding it today the international men's day is going to come and men's health is equally important as we understand the gracefully aging men who work hard every day go to their offices in these times and then come back home safe actually are going through their own changes and we need to look into that too and that's again by questionnaire by understanding asking peers and taking it forward and i'm not getting into that but 19th november is also a world observance day finally we come to world hygiene day and we understand all this are on public domain for us to be aware it's all about creating awareness and stimulating you look at a kind of advertorial which i came up with which was all about nocturia night time urination i i i told you elderly people go through this trouble around youngsters also go through it but elderly people also have a weak sleep therefore the sleep is poor the urine production is more they are awake multiple times at night and what does old age bring old age also brings other kinds of friends called parkinsonism and arthritis and spine issues and diabetes and blood pressure for which they have to take medications get up at, at times at night may slip and fall down so old age sadly is another completely different issue which we need to any risks of bed wetting is something which is completely treatable and that is a kind of an advertorial which was created when we started this clinic at kokila bay hospital nine patients who came all the way from thane which is two and a half hours away from andheri in normal times people came in asking are you sure you're talking about this that you can treat it completely we have been living in diapers we have been living it all our life so to improve the quality of life of individuals sometimes we need to go to the media we go to the social media we go to the electronic media we go to the print media and reach out to you to make you understand that world sleep day and world bed wetting day are important things getting up multiple times at night is completely treat wetting bed wetting at night for children between 6 to 15 years is not about leaving them alone it's very important look at somebody as big as george orwell 1984 he said i was a bed wetter i was weak i was confused i was unpopular i had no way out i was cowardly and i smelt of urine imagine that kind of a personality gave you the book which was a best seller of all times 1984 so men live in agony they live from the childhood to adulthood they live in agony not that everybody gets cured of its own unless you see a doctor therefore we decide to look at quality of life of individuals and set up the country's first nocturia and bedwetting clinic at kokila bay hospital 3 years ago and it feels proud that we went to the unmet need of society and ask people how do you want to spend your night in the washroom or in the bed you want to sleep those 8 hours like you do in corona times and do very well or you continue to live in trouble so this is very important for us to look at it if you can dream it you can do it so take it forward the last part is all about myths and shattering the myths before we take your question and answers and to give you as we peak to a very high level the first myth is people think everybody is born with two kidneys the answer is not true one in 4000 individual is born with only one kidney that is called as a in medical term solitary renal agenesis agenesis is absence renal is kidney solitary is one but let me confess there are patients who are born with single kidney so that is a single kidney here and there is no counterpart here he is born with one he is an adult and he is doing very well the message here is you can live with one kidney very well i'll come to that message a little later when i touch a very thought provoking important topic as i close look at somebody who was born with three kidneys one kidney is here one another kidney is here and then there is another kidney out here so god gave surplus what does it mean sometimes god may give no kidneys a child who is born with no kidneys would die in 24 hours because the whole homeostasis of the body mechanism will not work and somebody who is born with one kidneys becomes an adult somebody who is born with surplus kidneys has got more to handle and therefore more diseases which could come to him because more organs more aging changes number 2 donating one kidney to a relative for a kidney transplantation would endanger life that is a myth Answer, answer is donating a kidney in a live related kidney transplantation is done after evaluating that the better kidney stays with the donor your nephrologist and your urologist will work hard as a team i look at that there are two kidneys in you first of all one kidney stays with you which is a better functioning kidney and a lesser functioning kidney which could be a little lesser functioning 
could go to your own relative whose life you would save by giving a gift of life. Donation of kidney does not engender life or future lifespan. In other words, you are always on a medical role and the medical community continues to watch you every year. You are picked up of diseases much faster and earlier than all those people in society. So donation is an important aspect and you can donate one kidney. That cannot happen for the heart and the brain. That can also happen for the liver because the half the liver can be donated in life. But that's it. Let's go to third. Kidney is not affected by diabetes or blood pressure. Blood pressure is hypertension. The answer is not so. Kidney is directly affected by both control and the number of years of both diabetes and blood pressure. And I rate that diabetes and blood pressure are big epidemic diseases which is catching up the whole world. Diabetes in India is catching up so big. In other words, the commonest causes of kidney failure today in this whole world, which is called as end-stage kidney disease, for we urologists do kidney transplants, are uncontrolled and long-standing diabetes and blood pressure. So all those patients or all those colleagues today who happen to be ambassadors in the audience today who would spread this message to the, to the entire society from this important platform. It is important to know that diabetes and blood pressure control should be taken under completely strict control. I'm talking about taking them to the front row seat. Don't forget that the diabetes control cannot do. It has to be happening all the time. Myth number four. Urologists and nephrologists deal with kidneys only. No, not true. I did show you that organs, adrenal, kidney, ureter, bladder, prostate, urinary organs and the genital organs and the sexual organs all are within the domain of a urologist. Urologists are specialists who deal with the medical and surgical diseases of organs of genital urinary system starting from the adrenal glands to the kidneys to ureter, bladder, prostate and sexual organs. Therefore, need to see a urologist if you have picked up any diseases or any complaints. Nephrologists are specialists who deal with the medical diseases of the nephron. Nephron is a basic unit of the kidney. Like bricks are the basic unit of your wonderful house where you live in in this corona times. The nephron is a basic unit of the kidney and it's related to the kidney's activity. That means any kidney failure and inflammations of the kidney are handled by my nephrology colleagues who are partners in the retroperitoneum for us. Myth number five. The bigger the prostate, more the obstruction to the flow of urine. Not so, not at all. It is, the obstruction is internal. A very small prostate of 20 grams can obstruct the prostate and a 200 grams may still not obstruct the prostate. Therefore, don't go only by your sonography imaging. The urophlometry decides which station are you in. Are you in Dombivili or are you in Bandra or you've already reached church? The answer is the size of prostate doesn't have a direct correlation to the obstructive urinary problems. It's what the prostate does to the urinary passage by the internal growth and the occlusion of the passage that brings obstruction, brings about your complaint. The blockage of the urinary passage in men, which happens in 40s and 50s, it can be picked up early only when you come to a health checkup or you see your urologist who examines you. Some people thought about prostate is in the scrotum. That's not true. Prostate is a deep-seated gland at the level of the male bladder neck, deep inside your body, surrounding the base of urinary bladder that grows with hormone changes. What you find in the scrotum are the testes, which are the hormone creating organs or the organs which create hormones of the male. Smoking does not affect kidneys. That's not true. Smoking is identified as a major risk factor of kidneys, ureters, urinary bladders and all smokers past or present run a risk of cancers of above organs throughout their life. That's only in urology but as I told you mouth cancers and esophageal cancers and gastric cancers all those come around. Hematuria or bleeding in urine happens because of less water drinking and summer season. No, not at all. Uh, should uh, never be taken as bleeding in urine should never be taken lightly. Most commonly, hematuria or bleeding in urine happens because of stones, because of cancers, or because of severe urinary infections, or sometimes in the background of your enlarged prostate, the antiplatelet drugs of ecosprin and clopilet you take in the area of angioplasties, which are called blood thinners, could cause increased risk of urinary bleeding, but in the background of stones, cancers, urinary infections or something. There can be no smoke without fire. Bleeding happens because there is something happening inside. Never take it lightly. Patients have had mild bleeding. They postponed it. They came back in an emergency with a massive bleeding and clots. It was picked up with a big stone or a cancer inside. So bleeding in urine is never normal. It's not a monthly menstrual period. It's very important for us to wake up to this trouble. Myth number nine, male and female urinary tracts are similar. Not true. Males have a common passage for urinary and sexual health. Women have a different structural architecture of separate urinary organ and then the vagina and then the rectum. And therefore, the urinary passage, where there are no bacteria, sadly is at the waiting ground where vaginal and rectal bacteria can infect the woman. And therefore, women's urinary tract hygiene is mo much more higher required because they'll end up with more urinary infections even in the formative years. And post-menopausal, when the hormones are not there, any bacteria can easily walk in through the vagina. 
we are coming to the end of the myths the incidence of urinary infections are equal for males or females as i rightly said women are more prone to urinary infections as a result of their architecture of urinary and sexual organs thus the continued contamination of the introitus age related hormone changes that makes a post menopausal woman more prone to recurrent utis that means our mothers and our grandmothers sadly suffer with more urinary infections than the youngster ladies but there are at least hormones and whether organs are working well in architecture production of urine is same during the day and the night not so not so at, at least in elderly production of urine in elderly or geriatric population could actually be more than one third of total production which is called as nocturnal polyuria thus making them more prone to excessive night time urination leading to nocturia or getting a multiple times at night it does not mean it doesn't happen in young age so young age also gets nocturia or getting a multiple times at night to pass urine but nocturnal polyuria or production of more urine happens more in the evening of life when you're gracefully aging around and while the final myth is childhood bedwetting is cured spontaneously bedwetting in children beyond 6 years is curable and needs to be actively treated by a urologist and by a pediatrician towards improving the brain and the bladder rhythm and preventing it from being continued to adulthood one to two percent of them actually continue to adulthood others get spontaneous resolution but would you wait for a six and a 12 and a 15 year young child to be bedwetting every night and possibly missing it out not so kidney stone formation is related to eating seedy vegetables and fruits like tomato guava and lady's finger that's a big myth in the society i answer that 24 by 7 in this hospital and my colleagues in urology do all the time it is not true kidney stones are concretions forming due to excessive solutes in urine that are not dissolved and progress to grow and obstruct the urinary passage named the ureter the stones are not made of seeds but the aggregation of oxalate calcium uric acid and phosphates in the background of less water so I always tell people to improve their water intake friends it's always to understand that we are bold out in life and we need to understand that we need to move forward this we need to wake up to this understanding that it is very important for us to move to the next level we can make it impossible to possible we can finally treat and cure and in words of barack obama the erstwhile president yes we can it is only a team work which can help us when we look at all this you also understand that there is a time to dial u for urology that means you have looked at the urological changes u for urology is not so difficult to dial it's all about this important bend in the road which you have to take forward be motivated see your urologist i would come to the end of it by the last few very thoughtful slides the urology as a health may have many versions it could have a lot of confusion in mind today was an attempt from a to z in the subject that means we were looking forward to open up the subject and stimulate you rather than treat you if you have got urinary issues you are empowered today to move forward and get treated a journey of 1000 miles begins with a single step if you understand it then you have done what vikram saravai said he who can listen to the music amidst noise can achieve great things in the era when you are so bored with so much information it is important to understand that if there is anything wrong in urinary health we must see our urologist good things always take time as 2020 health burden and the challenge seems bigger there is one subject which i have not yet touched the last few slides are about that it's always darkness for those individuals who have got kidney failure it is important for us to look at light at the end of the day for these individuals who have got kidney failures heart failures and failures of the kind which they go through which means we need to again participate and work together and for me who works on robotic consoles and learning the robotic work and going inside it is important for us to look at india shines better today because of the partnership because there's all good news issue i must bring about this important issue of organ donation all of us think that we give away one kidney and it will be wrong let's listen to somebody who spoke about it for one minute uh dr pandey we can't uh, we can't hear the audio here you can't hear the audio uh dr pandey maybe you would audio. like to share the message yourself because we can't hear the audio okay okay fine so the message is here this is the message that i that mr bachchan was trying to pass is what i am trying to tell you 
life is something which you need to pass on the organs that are given to you are gifts that are given to you in this era and it could partly be passed on when you go away i'm quoting from robert test in 1978 brain death and organ donation and that my last slide at a certain moment a doctor will determine that my brain has ceased to function and that for all intents and for all purposes my life has stopped when that happens don't call this my death bed call it my bed of life and let my body be used to lead fuller lives give my blood to a teenager who has been pulled from the wreckage of his car so that he might live to see his grandchildren play give my eyes to a man who has never seen sunrise a baby's face or love in the eyes of a woman give my kidneys to one who depends on a machine to exist from week to week give my heart to a person whose own heart has caused nothing but endless days of pain explore every corner of my brain take my cells and let them grow so that some day a speechless boy will shout at the crack of a bat and a deaf girl will hear the sound of rain against her window take my bones every muscle every fiber every nerve from my body to find a way to make a crippled child walk burn what is left of me and scatter the ashes to the wind to help the flower grow if you must bury something let it be my faults my weaknesses and all my prejudices against my fellow men give my sins to the devil and give my soul to god if you do what i have asked i will live forever and this comes 1976 close to 30 40 years ago when somebody wrote about organ donation the organs that is given to us are not ours when we go we should be lucky enough that we could be able to pledge our organs for somebody else in other words uh, is there a way that we could probably promote and make people understand that these organs can be donated so as i said health burden is going to be a burden all the time unless we early identify and logistically conclude that is the only truth of the moment as i said i have been taking my passion for a purpose and that purpose came up last year when indian government did pass the final transgender bill i work on transgenderism to a very high level and we did go all the way to society to promote this to even make them understand what does it mean for a transgender individual like the agony of other patients who go through. friends if we always do what we've always done we will always get what we've always got let's not postpone health the final sentence is there's a dream they always say elvis presley never wanted to be a singer he wanted to change music at kokelab in hospital there was always a dream if you have a dream have a big one and all of you it is important for all of us to have many elvis presley within us it's time to let him out if there is a problem please go and see your doctor in india and in urology and in health the headlines from motivated monday tomorrow from dr mahendra bhandari's team should be i love my doctor i love my urologist because he takes care of me you did not come all the way this far only to come this far you came for the success you can do it it's only a team work which can make for so very few topics evoke so much of anxiety and pleasure pain and hope discussion and silence as a function and dysfunction of organs which are going through very gradually we live in an era of stress innovation competition evidence based medicine and enormity of disease only setting very high standards would go a long way in your safety of your health in indian urology therefore please partner your doctor because that is only way you would be a game changer if you think about prostate kidneys ureters urinary bladder urethra and everything happening under the undergarments like kidney stones incontinence bedwetting obstruction think about the man the doctor and yourself think about the machine the instruments that the doctor uses to treat and cure you think about the medicines that are available in the country be motivated for a life saving life changing life extending and a life modifying treatment which will bring you back to active and full life you are a game changer every life matters thank you so much for this important platform to be taking it forward thank you dr bhandari thank you prateek and thank you team medicom